Now I'd like to bring in Haiyan Wang for more insight. She is the managing partner of the China India Institute in Washington, D.C. Welcome back to the broadcast. Glad to be here, Susan. Globally, are we headed for a recession? I don't see it right now, although there is a lot of volatility. Because even though there is a downward pressure, there are a lot of headwinds coming up. But the forecasting of a 3 to 3.4 percent global growth is not a recession. Uh, U.S. economy is uh, steady, a not robust recovery, but fairly steady. Annualized uh, growth this year could be around 2.5 percent. China's the second largest economy. Uh, could head to a range of 6.5 to 7 percent, even at the 6 to 6.5 percent on a 10 trillion dollar economy. That is still uh, very impressive. And emerging markets like India is growing very fast, could expect a 7 to 8 uh, percent. Japan is probably still in the stagnation, but Europe could not go any worse. So when you look at the aggregate uh, global economic growth, a uh, lot of headwinds, a lot of challenges, lots of volatility, but we cannot say that it is heading into recession. At the G20, they talked a lot about shoring, sagging growth, but they really didn't make any pledges on joint action. And that's precisely, I don't think they see the urgency, because if they don't see crisis upcoming, so there's no crisis responses, they do call for coordinated efforts on monetary front, on the fiscal spending front, and call for uh, each country to launch structural reforms. But a lot of these talks are in the right directions, but the immediate actions, the urgencies, are not there yet, precisely because we're not headed into recession, not yet. Why did they, in fact, play down this meeting? They know it comes once a year. Mm -hmm. uh, the US, China, and Europe, really, they mm -hmm. all played it down. I think that because they recognize there are a lot of differences in terms of economic challenges domestically and a lot of different perspectives. On the one hand, IMF calls for coordinated uh, fiscal spending. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, you hear the UK chancellor saying we cannot spend more than what we can afford. You see Germany saying that uh, you know too much debt-filled growth is not good. Uh, China has already um, committed to keep the growth stable, but without going back to the the trillion dollars uh, massive stimulus in Japan also is not aggressive on fiscal spending. I think that these global leaders played it down so that the expectations for an immediate coordinated fiscal spending to, to boost the global demand, you know, would not happen. They know it because of the different perspectives and the lack of sense of immediate urgency. There's been a lot of talk about in the UK, the EU breakdown and how this was going to affect the G20 talks, and really the global economy yeah. as a whole. I mean, a deal has been reached on the so-called Brexit, uh, but how would this impact the global economy? I think that the, the impact is more an uncertainty factor added to a long list of risk factors at this point because the market is so volatile and any uncertainties just cause more anxieties and uh, definitely uh, the global market, the investors communities, the financial industries in the UK, and, and they do not want to see uncertain factors. Uncertain factors means delayed investment decisions. And I think the fact that this is added to the final communique is more of a wing for the UK chancellor to get the international rally. But we don't know what the real impact will be, nor do we know what the British people will vote for mm -hmm. at this point. All righty. Well, hi, Yan Wang. We thank you for your time, as always. My pleasure, Susan.